Alright, so before we get into the video, I'm going to do every typical YouTube intro. Hey guys, so before we get into this video, make sure you don't forget to subscribe. It really helps out the channel that way. And also leave a comment, it really helps out the channel that way. Don't forget to ring the bell because it really helps out the channel that way. Oh, and before we get into the video, guys, make sure you uh, subscribe to my Patreon account. Uh, just so you, that way I can make a little more money here for YouTube stuff with the copyright and all that stuff. And I can do a lot more things creatively. Oh, and one more thing before we get into the video, guys, make sure you subscribe to my OnlyFans account because, you know, I look attractive. And one more thing before we get into the video, guys, uh, make sure you uh, buy my merch on the merch store for all you lemon heads over there. Oh, and one more thing before we get into the video, guys, um, make sure you uh, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. It's the only places where, you know, I give uh, updates to all of uh, my videos and what I'm doing if I can't record or anything like that, so make sure to get over there. Okay, so without all those quick intros out of the way, uh, let's get into this video. Alright, now let's get into the real introduction. Hello and welcome to Lemon Studios where we talk anything and everything entertainment. I am your official Zeke Lamone, and I'm not going to waste your time anymore because I already had that super long fake intro. Uh, this is the Lemmy vs. Lemmy game, so we take the good with Lemmy and the bad with Lemmy and we tie up the score to see where it lands on the Lemon scale. What's the Lemon scale? Well, it's this. As you can tell, bottom is really bad and Top is really, really good, okay? Alright, cool. We get it? Alright, let's get into Deadpool. Probably what's going to be the best version of a live-action Family Guy movie. And we open up with opening credits that they quote-unquote borrowed from Honest Trailers. Uh, Deadpool himself also says it in the Honest Trailer for Deadpool. <laughs> so, it's not a joke. It's actual fact. <laughs> uh, this really tells you what kind of movie we are going to be in and really gives the uh, taste for the tone and you know, again, uh, we know what movie we are in for. Uh, so we're going to start off with a Lemmy. Alright, after those opening credits, we then get a quick introduction into Francis, who is played by Ed Screen, and we also meet Dopinger, who is played by Karan Sony, and then we meet, of course, Deadpool, who is played by Ryan Reynolds. I am very sorry if I mispronounce any of those names. <laughs> uh, it, I, I'm horrible with them. I, I look up interviews and how it's pronounced. I I have a hard time really pronouncing it, so again, I just, I really apologize, I'm not trying to not learn it, I practice it many times, but I sometimes just cannot get it. Alright, so let's get into this, again, it was a very quick introduction to Francis, um, it was just to show how bad he is, pretty much, and uh, Dopinder and Deadpool are in a taxi cab, because Dopinder is Deadpool's taxi driver, and they are really just having a conversation about love, um, and then of course, Deadpool breaks the fourth wall, and we automatically catch up to the credits nine minutes into the movie, which makes me really happy, because I was afraid that, oh, it's, we're going to do this, oh, we're going to start at the end, and then work our way back to this. In a way, it kind of does that, but it does in a new way. Uh, I hate it when movies do that, so it would have been a line if we would have done that. It, to me, I, I just absolutely hate that. But they don't. Uh, we catch up to it in about nine minutes. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, it's really good stuff so far. We then meet Colossus, who is played by Stefan Kapik, and we also meet uh, Negasonic Teenage Warhead, who is played by Brianna Hildebrand. I know I mispronounced Stefan's name. I, I, I just know I did. <laughs> so again, Stefan, I'm really sorry if you do end up watching this. Uh, we then get a really cool sequence with 12 bullets. Well, Deadpool's like, alright, y'all gonna have to share 12 bullets because it's all I got. Uh, so I'm gonna give a Lemmy for the very cool action set piece. We then go back in time to Wade's time before being Deadpool. He's basically a Mandalorian. He finds he's a bad guy who finds other bad guys and makes them pay more. Some people say that's not a bad guy at all, but he does do some despicable things. Uh, it's a, it's nice to go back for a little bit. I'm not a huge fan of it in general. It's not worthy of a limey or anything. To me, I'm just like, it's just, I, I don't like time jumping a lot. In a way, it could be done right, but to me, for the most part, I'm not a huge fan of it. So he also has this bar of Mercs. Well, he doesn't own it, but he goes to a bar of Mercs where they have this Deadpool. Uh, in this bar, we also meet his best friend Weasel, who's played by T.J. Miller. Um, probably won't say that much more in the future. <laughs> um, and in this Deadpool, there's a lot of things from like Miley Cyrus, Mike Tyson, Shia LaBeouf. 
all the way up to Ryan Reynolds himself, who they think is going to die because, you know, it's a Deadpool. And Weasel actually betted on uh, Wade to die. What a friend, am I right? We then meet Vanessa, who's played by Marina Bakarin. I'm pretty sure I mispronounced that name as well. <laughs> Again, I'm horrible with names. I am sorry, and this is why I'm given a Lemmy for meeting Vanessa, because now we got all the main players out of the way. I'm not going to do any other names. Uh, besides here, I only try to get the main players, and now they're all out of the way super early on, and I really appreciate that, so a Lemmy for that. We then have a flirt off between Wade and Vanessa. Basically, their flirt off is... My life sucks worse than yours. And it honestly works. <laughs> like, I buy into the chemistry. It's, it's To me, it's cute. I, I know that's uh, really weird to say that, you know, like, they're just like, oh, uh, you had a house, blah, blah, blah. Oh, you had a bed to sleep on, all this stuff. It, it, to me, it was adorable. Uh, uh, and I really enjoyed it. And then we get into a lot of sex scenes. And obviously, we're not going to show that because uh, we would then be blocked <laughs> worldwide, so just the stadium behind me for now. <laughs> and it works. Like, these, that's one of the very few cases where sex scenes actually work. Like, look, I, I don't mind sex scenes. <laughs> Obviously, I'm a guy, so uh, I don't mind them. Uh, but here, it actually felt necessary. <laughs> Uh, and it actually had a purpose to it and all that, really bought into the love of it. Uh, really, really good stuff, not just because they are doing some good stuff. Uh, and then after all that, Wade proposes to Vanessa, she says yes. Uh, she was happy with a ring pop. I need me a girl like that who would be happy with me proposing with a ring pop and then later I get the real ring. <laughs> um, and then he gets cancer. Uh, and Vanessa's trying to find things to, hey, what can we do? What's the best plan? What's plan A, B, C, D, all the way to the Z, while Wade is just trying to really memorize her face before he dies. He wants to leave, actually. He wants to get out of Dodge. Uh, he just wants to face this on his own side. Like Vanessa doesn't have to suffer with him. Uh, I, I see where he's coming from, but she's like, no, 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 no. what? No, well, you're not doing that. And then we get back, and Wade finally finds Francis, and he's ready to like beat him up and all that stuff. And while he's doing it, he's like commentating, okay? And that leads into today's YouTube sponsor. I don't really have a sponsor, but you know, uh, I made fun of every YouTube intro, so now I'm going to do a, a sponsor segment. I'm going to create something. And today's sponsor is, have you ever felt lonely in your life? Do you ever feel like you just need someone there to maybe explain everything that's happening? Well... Now you can get your real life commentators who will commentate everything in your life. From walking back into your home when you get off work. Hello and welcome home Zeke. And it looks like he has had a long day at work. He decides to make a beeline for the couch instead of the bed and go to sleep. To doing the dishes. Zeke looks at the pile of dishes but decides not to do them. And to just simply sitting on the couch. Zeke sits down. Act now, and you can get this uh, low, low, low price of just $5.99 a month for your own personal commentator of your life. Call now. So we're back in the past, and uh, Wade goes to the Merck's uh, bar, you know, just to get his mind clear. He always looks awful because the can cancer has really taken over him. And Weasel says, hey, this guy's over here and all this stuff, and not much is going on. But... Weasel beats me to the punch, and he goes, uh, that guy's over there, he's probably going to further the plot a little bit. I was like, ah, oh, he beat me to it. So then I was left in the conflict. Do I still give him Limey for not much going on, or do I commend them for, you know, realizing, hey, the movie's kind of stopped. <laughs> uh, let's see uh, if I can uh, push it over and just make it a little joke. I'm going to still give it a Limey because I'm mean. And also, just because you point out doesn't mean you get special treatment. So, lining for not much going on. Well, kind of just hanging out for a little bit. And for the stuff in the past, I get it. Because, you know, we, we, we need to live in Wade having cancer for a little bit. But I just really wish we didn't have the time jump. Uh, to me, I, I get it. I, I, again, I get the time jumps. It helps the character of Deadpool a lot. I'm just not a fan of it. Like, when I go to the future, 
I just feel like we're just kind of hanging out for a little bit. Like I feel like we could just took it, all that stuff out. Like the stuff on the bridge, sure, but everything with Colossus and Mega, Megasonic, it's not really needed. There's some great funny stuff in there. Like I said, this is the closest thing to a live action Family Guy movie we are ever going to get. <laughs> um, and it actually being good <laughs> for, for the most part. And, but honestly, you take those out, you take those jokes out. Do you miss a beat? I, I, I would argue you don't. Good stuff helps the character a lot. But you can take those stuff out and still be there. But I would also see the argument of, well, will the movie be as good? Maybe not. But to me, still align me for just kind of just hanging out for a little bit. And now the plot's going to move forward. White still goes to the institution because, of course, he needs to become Deadpool somehow. And then we get another scene with... Colossus and Negasonic Teenage Warhead, but again, like I said before, when we're just hanging out, they didn't really drive me anything forward besides Colossus wants ways to become an X-Men, and it's all just basically one joke. Um, and again, I just have to give a line before it. I know I'm just making it at this point, but we're just hanging out. I need stuff to move, move it forward. Yeah, you can have your jokes, but move it forward. <laughs> um... And then the stuff at the institution is also really, really good to me. It, I really enjoy the stuff at the institution. Uh, it, we're actually learning stuff. There's still jokes there, but things are moving forward. We get to know the origins of why Francis hates Wade, because he, uh, Wade basically just told everyone he got his nickname from a uh, dish soap because he called himself Ajax. Uh, to me, that was... The best joke in the whole movie. I think I busted it. I, I literally busted out laughing when I first saw that. <laughs> or heard that, I should say. I, I thought that was just the funniest thing ever. Um, and then Wade becomes mutated. And, you know, every, again, we're, we're learning stuff. And we're having fun with it. So a lemon for that. So after Wade becomes mutated, the uh, building kind of collapses and all that stuff. And he goes to try to see Vanessa. But he just can't bring himself to do it. Because... He thinks he looks absolutely horrible, and also doesn't help that everyone else is looking at him like, oh my god, what a monster. He's so ugly and all this stuff. And then he goes and makes the Deadpool name, and you know, how he should make the costume and all that stuff with his friend Weasel after they discuss how ugly he is. <laughs> uh, I also really like the Captain Deadpool. No, just Deadpool. <laughs> I, I found that very funny as well. Uh, and now the origin story is complete, and we get a montage of Deadpool killing people. Alright, now at this point, I, I can't do it anymore. i got to give a standout to Reet Reese and Paul Wernick. Um, first, as a Lemmy, because to me, the, the writing's great. Like, every joke for me just lands for the most part. <laughs> it is just bam, bam, bam. You're just laughing, you're having a good time. It, the movie really doesn't miss a beat. Uh, I knock on the hey, we kind of just hang out for a little bit. And I'm going to get to that again for the last time uh, in a little bit. But the writing is absolutely fantastic. It's a standout. So five extra points for Lenny for the writing alone. Now, on the flip side, a standout Limey for Paul Wernick and uh, Matt. And Re Reese. <laughs> I, I don't know why. I, I freeze on his name again. <laughs> uh, but a Limey for it because, again, there's a lot of times where the movie just kind of stops just for a joke, and I get it. It is a comedy first more than anything. Well, a love story more than first. This is why we're doing my Valentine's Day, by the way, because uh, this is a love story for the most part. Basically like Beauty and the Beast, but in this case, if Beast was shy. Um, and sometimes it just stops a little too much. I can see why some people just aren't a fan of the movie. I don't really think the comedy is a problem. I think for the most part, people laugh. People get it, unless it's just not your type of humor. But to just kind of stop everything and just, you know, just to build up to a bit, it can get kind of redundant sometimes, and I can see why some people just aren't a fan of it. So five limey standout points for the writing alone, but that could be just the characters riffing off. But I'm going to give it to the writers here for that. But from here on out, the writing is absolutely fantastic. It's just bam, 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 story, 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 story. 
Um, Francis is like, alright, we need to find Wade. And when he goes to the Merck's uh, bar, he finds a picture of him and Vanessa together. He goes, oh, that's all we need because that's all he talked about. That's all he wanted to see. So they go to kidnap Vanessa. And then once uh, Weasel tells Wade about it, they go to the strip club where she works. Again, not going to show any of it. I could have Draven just put a bunch of limeys on the women's uh, bodies, but I'm going to make it easier for him and just have the uh, stadium behind me again. <laughs> and uh, this is where we get our Stanley cameo. He is a uh, DJ at this strip club, and it's one of the better Stanley cameos. And here at Lemon Studios, Stanley is always a Lemmy. And then Wade Lily grabs all of the guns. <laughs> He's like, they load up all the guns, and he grabs Colossus and Negaton and Teenage Warhead. They open a rise into the final fight, and the final fight is really, really good. I really enjoy this final fight from the all the jokes to the uh, superhero landing and Wade going, <laughs> and all that stuff. Um, Colossus trying to be a gentleman to the uh, villain, uh, to the female villain anyway, uh, played by Gina Carano. And uh, I guess I guess she was a major player. She didn't really have any lines, but I'll say her name because she is kind of a presence throughout the whole entire movie. So Gina Carano playing the uh, female villain. I do not remember that character's name at all. <laughs> I don't even think she had a name. I wouldn't be surprised if the credits was female villain. Uh, Stun out his name and the bodies because he said, oh, I'm going to spell it out for you. Really enjoyed that. Uh, and also... The final joke, of course, of Colossus giving that big epic speech of you shouldn't kill four to five moments for heroes and all that stuff, and Wade just shoots Francis anyway. <laughs> uh, really good stuff, and also, of course, the final shot, because, you know, this is a love story at the end, and when they do have that epic final kiss, and he is playing the song on his phone, going, bam, because like, it was epic. Uh, absolutely loved all that. A Lemmy for this whole final sequence. And with that, that is the end of Deadpool. And for a final standout, because you get three standouts, I'm going to give it to actor and producer Ryan Reynolds. His acting, of course, gets all the praise in the world because he was basically born to play Deadpool. He was a huge fan of this comic. And this is why his producer credit, to me, doesn't get enough credit for what it deserves. Uh, as you all know, <laughs> X-Men Origins Wolverine, they sew Deadpool's mouth shut. I don't think Fox really knew what they had with Deadpool. I don't think people, I don't think they knew people would get it. And they also really didn't want to finance this movie, but Ryan really pushed for it, pushed for it, pushed for it, because Deadpool was done so horribly in X-Men Origins, and he really wanted it to do it right. Fox finally gave the green light for it, but he, they wouldn't pay for the writers to be on set. So Ryan, as a producer, would actually pay out of his pocket to make sure the writers were on set for the movie as well. Like, oh man, like... This, they really wanted this movie, Fox really wanted this movie to fail, and Ryan just would not allow it. And now it's one of the most top, I think it's probably the second, yeah, Deadpool, uh, no, it's third now because of Joker. Deadpool is the third highest grossing R-rated film of all time, and then two is Deadpool 2. So, and I think it's probably the most profitable X-Men movie. If I'm not mistaken, that one I could be wrong on because it almost, I think it almost got to the billion dollar club. So I, I could be wrong on that, on that one. But nonetheless, as a producer, he killed it. <laughs> he absolutely uh, destroyed it and again, brought this character from obscurity from X-Men Origins to now being absolutely loved by everyone. There are people who are not even huge fan of comic movies, but they love Deadpool. I remember seeing this movie and my friend Baker who hates movies. Well, I guess hates a strong word. He's not a huge fan of them. <laughs> uh, I wonder how, wonder how we're friends, right? Because I love movies, and he absolutely is not a fan of them. But he saw the Deadpool trailer. was like, I want to see that one. And we went to go see that one. It's one of the few times he actually went, he goes to the movie theater. <laughs> I think that was one of the last few times. He hasn't been like in a year and all that. But that is it for Deadpool with a final score of 17 to 7. With then on the limit scale here, that puts it at a freshly squeezed lemonade. It is an exception to the rule, because usually you have to score at least 20, and all of your standouts have to be lemmies in order to be considered for the freshly squeezed lemonade. But to me, the movie's really enjoyable. I have a great time with it. My only problem, this is where the exception comes in, the only problem I have with the movie is that we just kind of stop for a little bit. That's literally, that's all the issues that I have with this movie, is that we just stop for a little bit. So if you take 
those out. To me, it's a perfect 17 and 0. But that's still not enough for strawberry lemonade, even though it's a perfect game, because you have to win by 30 for that. So with that only having one complaint, and it goes throughout the whole entire movie, I'm going to give it a freshly squeezed lemonade. So that is it for me, guys. But for real though, <laughs> please subscribe. It does help out the channel and leave a comment and like and all that good stuff as well. And do follow me on the social medias. Uh, Draven's going to have them somewhere. Uh, that's how we put them here, I guess, because I, I realize wherever I point is where he usually just puts it. Now he's probably not going to just to make me mad. Wouldn't be surprised. Because <laughs> uh, I do keep y'all updated. We are also starting the uh, Lemon March Madness. We did it last year when I was on SoundCloud and it was very successful, but now we are going from a field of 32 to a field of 64 with movie villains. So make sure to go follow me on those social media accounts to see when those start and how you can vote and all that fun jazz. I am Zeke Lalone and I will see y'all here next time at Lemon Studios.